team, it's Kate from The Fold Line and I'm back this week with another video for you all. Um, we got asked by lots and lots of people about where we work and our sewing spaces so we've decided this week to do a tour of both of our sewing rooms. Um, Rachel and I both have completely different tastes and you'll see that totally from our tour of the rooms. So I'm going to start first and Rachel will go next. We're both behind the camera because we're doing it on our phones so apologies if it's a little bit wobbly um, but I love seeing where people work I don't know about you I find it really interesting especially if someone's doing something creative I love like envisioning where all the sort of magic happens anyway I hope you guys enjoy this and we will be back next week with another video so make sure you subscribe to us or stay tuned for the next one so here we are this is my office come sewing room so I work from home so I spend quite a lot of time in here so I do my day job in here there's usually my laptop and then when I get a chance I can do a little bit of sneaky sewing so we've got lots and lots of stuff on the wall it's quite chaotic actually now I'm looking at it through here but that's just the way I roll them I think um, up here we've got all my storage lots of fashion books and pattern cutting books and actually had a clear out so there's a bit more space up there now. Over in this corner um, all the scissors that I use the most I have on the wall and this little unit is where I keep all my um, stationery, vintage rulers, I've gotten a bit of an obsession with them at the moment. Um, this little unit actually um, is used in churches to put the hymn numbers in so I found it outside a shop and they said they didn't want it so I got it for free so I was pretty chuffed with that. Down here, um, let's have a look. Well, pin dish, you have to have one of those magnetic. If you don't have one, you need to buy one. Um, snips in lots of colours, quick unpicks because you can never have too many. Um, these are these little sardine tins, they're quite handy. Uh, this is mainly my millinery stuff because I used to be a milliner for about five years and these were used for that sort of stuff. So the specialist pins for different things I won't bore you with it I won't. I won't no I won't so over here I've got my patterns that I'm working on at the moment or that I'm going to work with um, I like to have them out so I can have a bit of a look through if I want some inspiration um, this little unit is quite a sneaky little one um, I'm gonna open it up so you can have a look this is where I keep all my sewing threads or some of them anyway um, so it came off an old um, vintage Singer sewing machine and um, I got it in a flea market for about five quid so I was pretty chuffed with that. So down here in these drawers is where I keep all my fabric and believe it or not this is pretty much it for my stash. Um, I don't have much space I have to be quite sort of militant about what comes in and what goes out so I like to keep it all quite organised as well. Um, I've got down here in this drawer that I can't open is I've got a bit more fabric and hundreds of thousands of postcards that Rachel and I bought when we set up the fold line and haven't used so that's a, that's handy and now I'm going to show you I feel like there should be Jaws music when I show you this drawer this is like my drawer of shame yeah it's pretty bad isn't it this is what you think it is 35 patterns all, all thrown in there without their packaging, not organised, just absolute chaos. I'm actually quite embarrassed that I showed you that but hey ho. Anyway moving on, up here is a hat block. So um, as I said I used to make hats and um, you, use, you use these to form the shape of the hat so you will pull the fabric over it when it's wet, pin it all in, leave it to dry and then um, this, you'll end up with the shape of the hat. So this one is probably 1940s and I love it. I think they are kind of beautiful just to have out on display. And here are the ladies. These two ladies. Um, on the right we've got my Singer um, overlocker from Lidl. 120 quid. Can't say fairer than that. And they're actually, actually really good, really good overlocker. I was so pleased I bought that. This is um, one of two sewing machines I own. This is our Benina 230. Um, actually, we inherited this one, and it's really—I was really, really impressed with it. 
I also have a Janome that I use mainly just for putting in zips. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. Headphones. Does anyone else have to listen to headphones while they sew because they can't hear their musical podcast? Maybe that's just me. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed my little tour. Here we go. This is my sewing room. So when you first come in on the left, I've got all my ribbons in these little drawers in here. And then below that, all my paper patterns. And I keep my zips and everything stored in here. And then this is where I actually do my sewing on this old vintage table. And on the top we've got loads of Silco cotton reels, which are a bit of an obsession of mine actually. These ones actually belong to my granny, which is why I like to have them out on display. And of course, I'm never actually going to use them, I just like to look at them. What is this one? Cactus blue. Um, and <laughs> I've got down here Gladio red, I suppose after the flower. Um, there are some politically incorrect ones which I won't show on camera. Um, and then most of my storage is all in here in this massive unit um, that I had built. So at the bottom I've got sort of wool kind of projects that I'm working on. And then other things on the right, uh, they're projects that basically need kind of upcycling or altering. Store my machines on the bottom. And here I've got all the threads I do actually use. Bring this out. Unfortunately not very well organised, but there we go. So I have all my greens and blues in this one. And then I have all my reds and pinks and purples in this tin. Uh, main sewing supplies in here uh, and then the fabric of course so bottom shelf is all kind of like heavyweight cottons for sort of upholstery those kind of projects and then dressmaking fabrics above that uh, here I've got some massive vintage uh, reels that I picked up recently love those and then this is my shelf for uh, shock horror wool because Sewing's not the only thing I like to do. Uh, up here I've got all my linings, interfacings, all those sort of bits and pieces. Um, top shelf here I've got all my threads for embroidery, those kind of projects. Then we've got my uh, main cutting table, which is a really old vintage kitchen table. And as you can see, lots of projects been cut out on here, but that's what I love about it, the fact it's old been used as a kitchen table and so it doesn't really matter if I accidentally scratch it and then I keep all the sewing bits close to hand in this old letter tray here I've got all my pins, pens, bits like that, measuring tape keep all my scissors hung up on here and the cotton reels that I use most often uh, and then my view out the window is uh, my greenhouse and then I've got a little tray of these little mini cacti which I'm growing a bit like a cactus nursery love that and then on the right hand side I've got my pattern paper and also um, my cutting out paper when I've made patterns that I want to keep uh, I've got my notice board where I keep lots of like inspiring things and exhibitions I've been to and then I've got all these magazines that I haven't actually read through yet. Uh, and then all my sewing books down here. Unfortunately at the moment I'm actually waiting to have a new carpet put in so the floor isn't very pretty. But uh, there you go, that's my sewing room. Hope you enjoyed the tour.